Welcome to the video review and bonus materials from Westeros.org for episode 8, Hard Home. We'll be starting off with our highs and lows and a bit of background material, which will be on Hard Home this time, and then we'll go into our story-by-story -story overview of the whole episode. So, uh, let's talk about Hard Home. This is the place that uh, we see in this episode. This, we have never seen it on the show, on, in the books. This is the first time it's ever been seen. So, we've, it's not quite clear if we're going to see it in the books. Um, the point of view who is likely to go there isn't, perhaps. It's a big mystery, really. So, um, what they show is based a bit on what we know of the situation in the novels and the Dance of Dragons. Uh, many of the wildlings who didn't end up being captured ended up and who didn't end up sort of fleeing with torment ended up fleeing uh, with Mother Mole, this woods witch who promised them that they would find safety at uh, in the, the ruins of Hard Home. And Hard Home was his, the closest thing the wildlings ever had to a city and it ended up being it was basically a village um, maybe a small town we don't really have an exact sense of its size uh, on the Storold's Point and it had this sort of deep harbour there was trade with it but about 300 years prior to the, um, the, the conquest of uh, Aegon the Conqueror and his sisters, um, so about 600 years ago from the point of the present in the novels, uh, something happened there, some disaster. Um, it's claimed that there was, you know, uh, fires that could be seen uh, from, from as far as the wall. Um, some claim that you know people were carried off by slavers. The slavers came and and basically took as many slaves as they could and wiped out the rest. Um, others claim that um, Skags, the stoneborn warriors of Skagos, had invaded and basically eaten everyone. Um, Those are some and large cook yeah, fires. Then yeah, and you know there's rumors, reports. This is a place that's shunned. There's these screaming caves. But people here claim that they heard people screaming and str I mean, strange things are going it's on to there. Be demon haunted kind of. Horror. Yeah, it's also, not. Yeah, it's a horrible. You know, there's all social stories about it. Yeah, there's charred trees and burned bones, and you know, waters you know filled with swollen corpses, and it was um, no living people could be found, and it's been shunned since then. Now, uh, but because of the situation, the wildlings have now populated it. Um, to hide there in hopes of, of safety and, and, and sort of um, a way to escape. Uh, the harbour is deep, ships can get there. Uh, it was rather strange actually on the show but they decided that the harbour is they, it's not that deep, they actually no. have to stand quite off well, from shore. Um, but uh, so but that's some hard ships hard. did get their slaver ships did in fact yeah, get in there novels, and, yes, and, no, they can actually get there. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's because some of the wildlings at Hard Home they find out were taken away by slaver ships. Yes, right? yeah. there's slavers, uh, ships come offering to take them to safety, and yeah. it's uh, slavers who basically are opportunistic. We hear a bit about those ships. And one even, of them, founders, I, I think, another one actually reaches. One makes it to Bravos, and well, then yeah. there's a whole thing about, you know, Bravos and support slavery. So. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is the fact that, I mean, you know, the story is a bit different, and I guess we'll discuss that more in the hard home section. It's not a negative thing; uh, it, it's just it's different how it goes. So, um, so that's hard home. Basically, it, it is this place that they don't really give us an explanation. I would guess that it would look rather different than what it did on the show, in the sense that um, there's talk of hot springs, aren't there? I don't recall that one specifically. Maybe I, I thought there was something that suggested that. I think well, people are stuck on the idea that there are hot springs, but there's mm. caverns. There's always Cavern, caverns. Okay, because one of the things. Well, we let's saw... talk about it in hard home. Should we really? Well, talk? Yes, I mean... we should talk about it maybe with hard home. Okay, than, we'll than talk about it there. Well, I thought you wanted more for the background and then just talk about well, the difference. Well, fine. One of the speculations that we because it's a backstory more. It's than a backstory. Present. Like six hundred years ago, what happened six hundred years ago? Yeah. You have hard home. You have this weird configuration. No one knows what happened. And you have these screams, and you know, one suggests that these caverns may have been home to. Fireworms or creatures of that wyverns or creatures of that kind, dragons perhaps. Um, so that's interesting because we don't really know. I mean, there's this whole thing about the Horn of Joramon waking giants from the earth, and we don't really know what that means or is. Um, and there's even been the speculation that perhaps. Uh, could this have been a dry run by somebody? 
to it could have been Valyrian sorcerers deciding to do some experiments or you know the precursors to the faceless men trying out some things about you know how to destroy Valyria Valyria is destroyed in the doom 200 years after this it's a long time of course yeah but you know there's there's it's a big mystery and whether it's ever going to be resolved or it's one of those loose ends that is just there to kind of deepen the depth of the world um is a real question so it's interesting uh the whole yeah. thing about hard home uh in the world ice and fire we have a bit about um a maester who actually wrote a book about surgeoning there a few years uh prior to all this prior to uh, it being destroyed and how there were you know various chieftains who kind of controlled it and how he you know he was going to be killed uh, by one chieftain but he gets taken in by this sort of uh, warrior witch woman who protects him um, and then he makes his way back to Old Town to write his story and then he not long after he disappears and there's claims that he was seen on a ship going north that he was maybe going back maybe the relationship with that woods witch was not just an innocent you know guest thing um, so there's definitely a story there and we just don't don't have the whole pieces and wherever the winds of winter will expand on it and and you know the final novel dream of spring wherever we ever go there in the book is is a mystery when we discussed it a little bit preparing for talking about this episode we talked about whether you know we think it's going to be seen and i had the thought that perhaps we'll have a prologue that's a possibility yeah in hard home that would make a lot of sense it would given the situation which we will discuss in the Uh, hard home section a prologue character there would would make a lot of sense given yeah. the way the prolonged characters tend to end. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking it's gonna be Cotter Pike or something. But we'll see. Anyways. Yeah. I think I think we'll start with since we talk about hard homeless background, let's talk about start with our lows. Now I'll say that when we on initial viewing, I had been thinking about my low, we had disagreed on it. Um Milo was going to be the um, Ollie scene of Sam because I really take issue, it, it, it hits home to me that they, that's really all they've got for this conflict between John and the institution of the Night's Watch is this little boy who we only met last season who we really don't know that much about who the, the kid's fine as an actor, there's nothing but there's nothing, there's nothing to him except, you know they killed my family and it boils this sort of institutional I mean, thing yeah they let him be the spokesperson for everyone's problems with john's decision to let the wildlings uh, yeah. through the wall and it's all just personal it's all it, it just it and, and the fact that when he talks to sam it's entirely a repetitive comp- it's the same conversation, conversation. He has it's, with john. it's essentially the exact same conversation it's like is this what they've yeah, yeah. to me you know we would should have seen this Alice or Ford and people coming to Sam and say, you know, trying to convince John, uh, Sam, yeah. that John is in the wrong. Yeah. That would have been interesting. But like, no, it's Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. <laughs> so, but, but on further discussion and consideration, I have to say that... I won. You won. <laughs> uh, Arlo is actually Tyrion and Marine, the daddy of Tyrion. It is not, in isolation, the scene is okay. I, I okay, uh, in the novels, they haven't met. We don't know when they're going to meet. George has said, when asked about it, well, they will cross paths, kind of, after a fashion, but they'll they'll spend most of the next novel apart. So I expect, and the setup for, and what we've seen from previous chapters is there's going to be some very momentous stuff early on in The Winds of Winter. Momentous stuff in which Tyrion plays a big part. So my issue is, I think it's maybe a bit different from yours, is I realize this, how utterly undramatic Tyrion's arrival is. Uh, no, certainly he, when you point to that out, that his whole trip is, he does nothing really other than the bit with the slavers. Getting, get, yeah. yeah, and then and then this really weak thing where, oh, you have to take me too because I'm a dangerous fighter. And like, what happened to the cock merchant who was going to give, give Malco a fortune? Suddenly, oh no! Yeah. Here's a few coins because he's funny. Yeah. Uh, no, but clearly they were they were overstocked on cocks. Yeah. So. On dwarf cocks. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so that was all kind of weak and soft and not really interesting. Uh, well, I mean, it was interesting. Like, you know, Peter Dinklage is a good actor. Ian Glenn's a great actor. They're, they're both great together. You know, they work well together. Yeah. That's well, cool. I'm but so tired of good actors. Well, <laughs> in... <laughs> but just it's not, it's not enough. Yeah. You have to give them good material, and they were kind of kind of uh, material. Now. 
so he arrives, he introduces to Danny, it's like, oh, all right. And like, I know people who've read the books have been like really waiting for it. And I said, oh, I was so happy that's finally happened. But this episode makes but me... But then it's just the, the very idea of, oh, Tyrion has met Danny because there's nothing, nothing about the meeting. No, because the thing is, is at the moment on the show where they meet, there is no drama. There's absolutely no drama. Mm. Danny has apparently settled the situation. The sons of the Harpers stop killing people. She's marrying his daughter. And it's going to be a marriage, of, just a political marriage, where she expects she's going to be able to keep up with Dario. So it's not that much of a loss for her. And apparently she's still thinking of killing his daughter. She might, well, she might even yeah. be considering killing him. And I don't quite follow all that, but... Uh, well, I the mean, way it sounded, she was. It was more likely will, than she well, would kill no, him. It, well, it may not come to that. No, 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 no it probably won't. Maybe no, probably, not, not, not probably. It may not come, to, may that. Not come to that, which, which suggests that she's more likely to kill well, him. Well, obviously, well, this is because Dario has come, is, is keeps saying, but his, the reason they've well, stopped yes, is his daughter is the leader. All he tells her is kill people. Well, no, but he specifically says, I yes. think his daughter is the leader, and that's why they've stopped. So, right, but all his advice to her is kill someone. Well, which is pretty much what it is yeah. in the book. So I, I don't really see where your problem is there. There's no problem. I, I dislike the, the way the relationship is otherwise portrayed. The, it, the it detail so is great. It gets so focused on on that. I think that every conversation ends. Um, I don't that know. Anything else, that so. I, he is. Yeah. Anyways, I, I think uh, as far as that goes. Uh, the, so there, anyways, there's no conflict because no. the son of the Harpies is stop. His daughter is getting married. She's not happy with the, the situation, but at least the pit fighters are notionally free, even though she's completely ignoring the fact that in fact they're just blatantly bringing out <laughs> slaves. Uh, and she just doesn't question yeah, it. Oh no, these are free guys. They do exactly what they want. You know, I'm not telling them exactly what to do. Uh, it, it, and, and then there's no external threat. I mean, she mentions with Dor- uh, Dorio last episode, like, you know, there's anyone, trouble comes knocking. But what? Trouble. There's nothing, you know, Yunkai, there's a brief talk, but I mean, they made a deal with them. There's nothing, mm. vo- there, there was nothing in Volante's situation, the Volantine are causing trouble. There's nothing about Carf causing trouble. There's nothing. So basically, Tyrion arrives at a point in time where his advice. His right. help I mean, is he's not... there to advise her, he says. And there's nothing to advise her well, about. Well, he advises her to send off Jorah. Well, to not kill him, otherwise, but to send him off. Otherwise, oh, yeah. there's nothing. That was just a test to see if he was worth having around. But there's yeah. nothing. So now it's purely, oh, well, when we get to Westeros, you're going to help me get to yeah. Westeros. And, and went, fine, that's fine. But And make sure I take care of the small folk. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, but yeah. just to let me stay focused on what Sorry. I was saying. Hold on. Was that... <laughs> was that there's no, nothing dramatic at this moment. Tyrion is not needed, so it, it takes a lot of wind out of the sails. In the Wind of Winter, from what we've seen, Tyrion has murdered and lied and tricked his way out of being a slave. He has contracted himself into a mercenary company and promised vast sums of money to have them help him retake Casterly Rock. He is preparing to act on behalf of Daenerys, against the Yunkish, whose camp he's presently in. Uh, there's a lot that he's he doing. He has diverted uh, Aegon to Westeros, as opposed to going on to yeah. meet with Danny. Uh, not, not necessarily being aware of entirely of this, however, because he doesn't. he's lost well, he, fully contacts. No, but he was setting up. He, well, he was he pushing was, to see where, how he would you, react. He was to... planning to, to go with him, so it's yeah. not like he intended to go off the wrong But he's had either. some significant effect on the plotline. Yes, he has a major effect yeah. on the plotline that we're seeing. But, and despite being, on the whole, entirely darker and less pleasant than he yeah. was previously, because he's gone through a major trauma... Uh, but other than saying that he wants to drink all the time, Peter Dinklage's Tyrion is a pretty happy drunk, and he's and there's nothing. There's, so I, I thought he's a the, fluffy drunk. Fluff, well, there's a there's a, to me there's a lot of this complete lack of dramatic yeah. weight. Yes, not it. to his presence. Yeah, uh, and this is entirely a structural problem on their part. I mean, they could have fixed this up simply. She goes to his daughter, says, "Okay, and, you know, you're okay. I'm letting you out of a cell, and I'll open the." Fighting pits again. I don't like it, but whatever. The son of the harpy still caused trouble. Tyrion arrives and says, Well, have you considered the fact that the Miranese aren't going to accept you until you are one of them? You need to marry one of these guys. Marry Hisdar. Ah, boom. Episode 8, she decides that she's going to marry Hisdar. Episode 10, great games, marriage, things go to hell. But at least give him something immediate to do, other than just his personal drawer thing. Give him something, a sense that he can actually do something make her like he could argue her into it like and that, that's the thing if they if they kept her more like the book character who feels that when she starts to 
when she marries his daughter, she has to stop her relationship with Dario. That gives her an emotional stake in the situation. But as it is, his daughter is like, is like, it's like she's deciding what dress to wear in the morning. Like, okay, well, I guess I'll, you know, marry him. And, it and he didn't like, get any say in it, as people have pointed out. Talk about no. forced marriage. <laughs> yeah, he's been forced to marry her, but apparently has no say, hasn't shown no yeah. interest that we know of. They haven't set any of this yeah. up. They could have started seeding the fact, but he was also a suitor and suggesting yeah. you should marry. And then, and then have Tyrion immediately cut through it and argue and make convince her to it. Ultimately, it's her choice whether she does it or not, so she retains her agency, but he has an impact and a role, and now he doesn't, and it's felt very... And this is, again, all because of a structure that they've chosen, but they've chosen to place the Hisdar marriage stuff before Tyrion's arrival. Mm-hmm. Um, when they knew they were hurrying things up and hurrying him towards a meeting, they should have thought about it. So I, I thought, I just... I was looking at the scene, like the first showing, and then, you know, I was just really like, oh, well, okay, yeah. Um... The other side of things with, um, where on that scene is you had uh, you referred to it the small folk the focus yeah. on. I mean, I said I agree with you as well now that because my initial viewing of the scene I felt just very underwhelmed, and as I said the lack of tension and everything I couldn't quite pin down. But it felt like a pointless conversation for them to be spending so much time on. Uh, so what I reacted most to was again the harping on about you know how Danny's invasion is being made to be all about improving things for the small folk of Westeros. And the whole thing about the, you know, that idiotic break the wheel monologue yeah. that she has, which seems like basically she's going to go to Westeros and end the institution of, uh, you know, have, having a king or a queen and, and to institute democracy. I'm, I'm not quite sure no, what the plan is. Apparently it seems to be a tyranny. But the, is, is the idea of what works best. Yeah. But the other thing is, is like, as we said back then, we heard like, it makes no sense the idea that the Tyrols were ever on top. They've never been on top no. of this alleged wheel. There hasn't been this constant cycle. Yes, in the last few years, but she makes it sound like it's this long-term yeah. history uh, and that only the Targaryens I mean, can stop we, it. We had the just... weirdness as well with Varys telling Tyrion that he and Illyria had been in a sort of long-term planning to you know, basically do something about the poor state of the realm since Robert took over. But it was, uh, And you know, Robert was a disaster in the sense that they could see that the Lannisters were going to get too much power, mm-hmm. and that Cersei was power mad, and and so on. But you know, the suffering of the small if they, folk. If they want, if they seem to have settled on what well, it's the suffering of a small folk that is yeah. the issue, and you'd think they could have started setting that up from the first episode of the show, you know, establishing the sense that there's some plight that somehow Robert's reign is very um, unusually, I should say, it, not inequitable because. Anything where you have the one percent lording it over the the ninety nine percent, there's a huge you know there's a huge gap between them. That's always going to be inequitable, but unusually inequitable. Yeah. And it wasn't, you know, so long as there's peace and plenty, and there's a long summer, just plenty to go around. They're pretty happy. Yeah. It's only when there's war and trouble and yeah. chaos. But you know, why not say, well, look, if the Lannisters finally settle things, there'll be no more chaos and things will kind of calm down and eventually it'll sort itself out. It, it's not like Joffrey was out hunting peasants for sport. He was not great. But, but Tommen, is there a huge yeah. issue with Tommen? I mean, it, yeah. and there's really no reflection at all on what Tyrion thinks will happen with mm. Tommen and Marcella if mm. Danny comes in. He doesn't really, there's no revelation about anything along those lines which I found very odd. Um, there's no thinking about it. There's no discussing it. Mm. Uh, by losing Jorah, he doesn't have anyone to talk to. Barristan's not around. There's no. He has no one to talk to. Basically, yeah. is this Danny? Yeah. Which is actually kind of limiting for him as well. Um, it, so I it just, just feels so odd. It feels so modern. The idea that we can't justify Danny's desire to conquer Westeros as purely a dynastic thing, which is ultimately what it is. It's a, yeah. It is a dynastic thing. She feels she has a right to the throne. She has a right. She has a right to revenge for her family. Yeah. She has a right to the throne and she wants to go to where she sees as home. But they're hiding this. They're trying to, to bury this now because this is not very modern, right? To have somebody you know, feel that they have a right to take back a throne and be, you know... The, the 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 one you know ruler of a whole realm you know not elected or anything, uh, and they're, they're I think they're conflating it with the idea that well look Danny has all this concern for her you know freed folk 
Well, of course she has. She started out essentially as a slave. Of course she has a concern for those who are stuck in bondage and feels responsible for them. But she's not sitting around thinking about how she's going to Westeros to save the small folk there. Yeah. The, the, the view that we get from, you know, Septon Mirabal talking about the hardships of, of the small folk, how they suffer... The broken men, the, exactly, yes. You know, in times of war. That is not a view that the nobles sit around thinking about. Yeah. Not, not even the ones that are going to be in a position to rule, who are looking to be the rulers. That is not their concern. Doran Martell is like the only nobleman who really expresses the fact that, you know, mm. when we go to war, it's the common people who suffer. Mm. Uh, even Ned Stark doesn't really think yes, very much about... and what does Doran largely do? Avoids conflict. conflict. Because... Because of the concern. And speaking about Doran, there's another weird thing oh, about yeah. that scene. Because, and again, it's a structural thing. Because of the time where Tyrion meets with Danny, when he goes runs through, well, you're not going to get help from the Lannisters, certainly, and Stannis, no way. The Tyrells, maybe. Wait a second. But what about the Martells? No, no reference no. to them at all? Yeah. No. Uh, why? Because, oh, well, yeah, you know, my father did kill your your you know your your sister in law and her children your your niece and nephew so maybe they could be convinced but that that gives maybe gives too much away presume we're assuming here but they're going to follow along with the yeah. feast for crow storyline so again is this a weird little omission yeah this i forget does he even mention the veil his no. little finger and no. surely he can mention that little finger can't be trusted he can be bought but he can never be trusted no, there were a lot of... And the Ironborn doesn't refer to him either, I don't think. I no, don't know. No. Which, again, you know, obviously, Balan is the of king. You're not going to get any help there. So, but, <laughs> yeah, uh... Balan's still alive, <laughs> Greyjoy. Sure, <laughs> you know, she should have wondered, like, wait a second, you only named three people. Like, how about the others? Uh, the other great houses may... disappear in the last month. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's not that good of an advisor. Uh, I don't know. I, I Underwhelming, poorly structured, and just, if this is going to be what... Tyrion and Danny are like together like please spare me and kill one of them sooner rather than later well we need something dramatic to happen in which there's a conflict yeah. in which, that they can deal with and not just have them I mean they, okay if wine. they follow the end of Dance with Dragons Tyrion will be put in a position uh, yes of, he'll be in a, a, yeah. but but they, but this was wasted. This, this is a waste this, opportunity. This, this, they, this was a stupid sh- shoehorning that's meeting in early yeah Now, uh, for high, it's my high, not Linda's. Um, it's hard home. I liked it in general. Oh, well, I have a little, couple little issues. Uh, she just liked it entirely. Uh, I mean, it, it's, was, like, it's more like it was. I wouldn't. It's not a low for me, but it's okay. It, it wasn't like yeah. something because I, uh, yeah. you know, I like the sound design. I like the way it looked. I love the the seeing that we thought it was a little village that maybe went back a bit, and they show a few hundred wildlings, and then we see that there's thousands of wildlings on this forbidding shore. These spiky rocks, these huge cliffs. Uh, the visuals and the sound design when that ice storm, snowstorm developed on the, came rumbling down the cliff mm. and falling down and sorry, the screams as wildlings run and they're hammering at the gate and then they're just gone. Mm. And you hear isolated sounds and suddenly there's these whites. Now, I do have an issue with the whites in the sense that they've all become fast whites. They've become fast zombies. Uh, they've, they've made more and more of an emphasis on this. I mean, in the first season when John fights one, at the end, it's a big, slow, powerful, shambling kind of monster. It, it's it's relatively quick enough to fight him, but it's not like it's not a a thing that is. Uh, but it's not very action oriented. Exactly, it's not very no. action oriented. And now it's become this, this all of them just rushing all the time, and it led to this very chaotic editing, which I think was fine for what it was. It was it was supposed to be complete chaos, yeah. um, but I just I don't know. I just got tired of. All of them running. I, I like, I like the sort of I mean, for, for me, it, it, it takes away the. I'm pretty easy to scare. Yeah. But it didn't actually scare me in any way because I just find that a bit more comedic than scary. What I find, you know, what was the scariest thing probably in the whole thing, I think, was the children. Yeah. That the wildling chieftain is killed by when she sees them, yeah. she can't bl- eyes blind and ribs, yeah. and that was that was a creepy image, and that, that yeah. you know, um, I don't know. I think. Uh, so I think as an action sequence, I thought it was really good. Uh, there was some really awesome stuff. I you find you know, the encountering you know, with John and, and the the actual White Walker. That that one that, that one, was pretty cool. That, uh, that pretty was neat. Cool. And, yeah. and you know uh, we've never seen what Valyrian Steel does to a White Walker. 
Uh, but we do have the Im implication that it's claimed that uh, this last hero who fought the others used uh, a blade of dragon steel, yeah. and they assume it's Valyrian steel mm -hmm. um, or something like it. I mean, remember, the Long Night's supposed to happen some 8,000 years ago. I mean, Valyria doesn't seem to become get on the world stage so to speak until six thousand years ago you so to start a... talking about your proto valerians yeah <laughs> proto valerians azora high you know, red sword of heroes all these things but uh but it was kind of nifty to see Thomas i don't know Lightbringer. yes yes Thomas Lightbringer. <laughs> um so all this stuff is 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 i just thought it was quite good i, I mean i like the meeting with the elders um I like the i i sorry for her name is bridget uh, Soren something. She's the Danish actress from the, I think, um, the Danish The Bridge, um, who plays this chief to this. And I thought, I would have liked her to survive, actually, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I would have liked, I can see her kind of play a Val type role, um, and not make Gilly the only wildling on the wall. But, um, yeah. I think, you know, no, no, they gave I, a good end. Like and, you know, she, unlike the, uh, sadly, unlike the poor Sand Snakes, she actually sold that she was capable of fighting yeah true. um she she just came off a bit better i'm afraid and danish women for you though. danish women tough and yeah, yeah vikings viking blood yeah. Yeah, that's what it is uh the nordic stock yeah uh so anyways i i i i quite liked it i think for the most part it was really good they really sold the idea the only thing i think i think i would have wanted there's a couple of things that i thought would have worked i i didn't buy the dollar or said made it out of there alive to be honest, when I they showed him. I think he hid in the giant's pants. I guess <laughs> the giant came out and he kind of... He slips I mean, him down his They pants. go in and there's no sign of him. The yeah. giant breaks out, there's no sign of him. Well, the giant first breaks out, so I think he yes. hid him in his pants. I guess. And yeah. then he... Yeah, I yeah. guess. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> and then suddenly he shows up. So I... You know, not that I yeah. want Dolores Ed to be dead. Not that I ever call him Dolores Ed. He's just Ed, I guess. Yeah. But, you know. Uh, and the other thing... The other thing I think is that uh maybe maybe Torben should have died holding the line making sure john and a few more could get free maybe yeah. maybe yes, i don't I know guess they have some use for him or something or i'm something. sure they do and i'm fine with that i mean i like christopher yeah. hibju um i just i don't know i i thought maybe it was something that they could, could have considered mm. uh, i mean i know there were early reports uh, a, a leak claiming you know but they would claim you know john was gonna die and they claimed yeah. all sorts of things so um who knows? But uh, I think on, on the whole, I was pretty happy with Hard Hope, other than the fact that every, suddenly all whites are fast whites are yeah. rushing at you. I mean, I think that's basically just that sort of thing and just the general feel that this is going to be very different from what it actually is. Uh, <laughs> that just makes, it keeps me from feeling wow about it. it it's fine. I, I, you know, it's not a low for me, but nothing to thrill me either. It was definitely creeped out at points and sort of excited and felt really tense at times. Especially when that, that snow storm came mm. boiling down. That was really cool. Um, so, uh, story by story. Let's start with Marine. Um, yeah. We've covered this a lot. Uh, anything we noted here um. that we probably should have noted? Well, okay, Jorah. Uh, yes. Obviously, there's the whole thing of what is he thinking of having his grayscale and wanting to be near Danny, and does he? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the switch, I mean, obviously, you no, know, in the books, it's another character, a character not appearing in the show, but I guess grayscale. This character does not have someone that he is in love with and wants to get close to. Physically, yes. No, uh, uh, he is. Uh, very concerned, in fact, about making sure that he's not in close contact with people. With yeah. people, yeah. He's, he, he, uh, that character, uh, Griff, yeah. uh, has it on his hands and he wears gloves mm. or a hand, he wears a glove over it and uh, wears gloves, period, to, to hide the fact yeah. that he has it and to prevent himself from being able to touch anyone with, with his infected mm. hand. Um, many people expect that there is going to be a uh, more of this happening. Um, yeah, somehow it it's going to turn into an epidemic, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, but yeah, maybe. Yeah, but, uh, so uh, Jorah seems to lack a complete... And then, and then it felt, felt a little cheesy that he could just go and wander back over to Yezan and fight for him again. It felt... I, I don't think... It feels like they didn't really think 
this stuff through very well. I, and all because they wanted to rush the Tyrion yeah. Danny meeting. Yeah, there's all casualties of that. Uh, it's all the casualties of that. That's the thing. It felt it just felt kind of cheesy to me. So I, you know, I. Also, you know, I could have done with him trying to talk a bit more in that scene. Yes, okay, he's obedient to her, and she says, "Shut up." He shuts up. But it just <laughs> there's not a lot of tension when it's just two people talking about a third person. No, uh, it doesn't. And that person weird. just that person is just oblivious and doesn't mm-hmm. or, or or can't do anything about it, can't say anything. It just felt it. It was a weird dynamic. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. No, nope, there's not, really no, not much else to say about it, though, no, to be honest. It, just, it was underwhelming, and uh, I uh, I find myself, you know, I've been tired of Peter Dinklage Tyrion for a long while, and I am now increasingly tired of Danny as well, which is very annoying, being that she's my favorite character, and I just, yeah. I... Well, I mean, I think I, I, I noted was it the yeah. last, was the last episode of Dorio where yeah. I commented about it, I started to realize that it's not I, the same character at all. I don't recognize the character, and yeah. the character of Tyrion, this fluffy drunk that isn't at all particularly, he just makes the occasional vaguely Quip. sharp comment, which isn't, no, 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 it's... Oh. <laughs> I get, I mean, I, the more you talk about it, the more the, happy yes, you become. Yes, the more I talk, the more I think about it, I just want yeah. to right. toss them out a window, both of them. Uh, let, let's move on to them. somewhere else. Um... King's Landing. Now there, I, I was on the whole um, quite a bit happy you're yeah. with it. Yeah. I think Lena Headey finally not doing her... Squint, sort of wrink, slight constipated. wrinkle, constipated look. Yeah, no, uh, given true. more stuff to do, is doing very well, I think. And I think she's capturing very nicely how Cersei ought to be reacting in her yeah. sort of half sob, shout of rage and anger, her her desperation. Um, I think they're overplaying some of the deprivation a little bit much, like not letting her drink if she doesn't confess. I also I mean, think they weren't actually beating her. This, the, no, they weren't doing physical. No, they, they, they were, stripped her, they put her into the shift. Yeah. But they, I'm pretty sure they were feeling... I think the one thing they were doing was keeping her from sleeping. Yeah, they, they kept coming in and waking her up like once an hour and asking if she was ready to confess. But I think it felt like they were playing the whole, you know, sinners shouldn't sleep, sleep. easily. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to keep reminding you of your sins, but otherwise not, you know, not physically abusing. So it... That that felt like a little odd that they felt they needed yeah. to, but obviously they they can't show the whole you know waking her up every hour. Yeah. So I guess they wanted to put it in shorthand and and then uh, Kyburn comes in yeah. and that was a nice scene. I thought for him. So the only thing I kind of wonder is why are we deciding to have Kevin, who sees the potential sort of the insult to his house by yeah. having her in prison, seeing the the downsides all thing, decides not to want to see her uh, yeah. in the exact same situation that Kevin on the book does see her and I mean, his comes concern in. is entirely for the house he wants her to confess so that they can get rid of the problem of you know having her in prison uh, any concerns that it, you know it might impact Tommen's reign and all these things that he wants it exactly. dealt with as quickly as possible you know quieted down as much as possible for House Lannister and we've had all the Lannisters talk about doing things for the house all the time yeah but now it's like no, no, I'm not going to try and tidy this situation up. I'm just going to ignore that Cersei's in prison. Right, so that does, that that is very sensical to me. And so, like, it's Kyber who suggests that she does confess, yeah. and she says no to begin with. But um, and then, of course, that almost you know the work continues. Yeah, I do quite like uh, Anton Lesser in this role. I, I I enjoy him quite a lot. Watching him, he's a uh, he's a very consummate actor, and he yeah, just plays things very well. Uh... I, he's been very underused. I, they they could have done more with him this season. Um, if they had stuck a bit closer to novels, but of course they they, they wouldn't. <laughs> novels, um, not novels. No. Uh, short but good. I mean, I I think are you are you coming around a little bit that Lena Headey can do more stuff, and and, and it's just a shame that they um, sort of and that she and they kind of conspired to trap Cersei into this very narrow. I I think that it's okay here, uh, and but I still think that. You know, the fact that she refused to read the books before auditioning and then went in and did something very different and uh, apparently that affected how they wrote the role. 
no, nah, I'm sorry. That, you know, she's not ever getting forgiven for that one. Priscilla non grata. Yes. All right. <laughs> and on that note, let's... Sorry, I let's, don't forgive. Let's move on. Hmm. Bravo. Uh, we open obviously with Arya playing the, the game of faces with Jacket and telling her about her day as Lana. Now the first thing that left out of me is the fact that okay she's selling you know oysters and clams and so on. Well, in the book, Arya picks the name Cat, and actually the title for that chapter is Cat of the Canals. Um, so immediately, Catlin family I <laughs> was like, why is it like? It, is that phrase cat no longer allowed to be said since you know last season like you can't say cat anymore um obviously i think what they're thinking is oh you couldn't say it last season either no but could it was it uh, <laughs> since, since some time in season four uh i think what they're thinking is uh the aria who enters this cat of canal thing is further along in her training and education she knows more about what's going on than Arya did and she's older and so on so she wouldn't pick a name but tied to her family in any way she picks Lana it's funny because it's kind of borrowed from his name of this girl we meet to the daughter of a sailor's wife pretty blonde Lana or Lana depending on how you want to pronounce it um, two ends it has to be Lana I guess so um, who who some speculate has a connection to Tyrion, maybe, or perhaps, some Lannister. or some of Lannister. Yeah. Um, in any case, I think um, I liked it. I yeah, I, I like no, seeing I think... Bravos. I like I love when Maisie sings out, you know, clams, cockles, and oysters. It was it was, it was nice, yeah. and then the 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 interaction with the Finn man, yeah. um, all that stuff is very interesting. And it's you know following the book pretty well, uh, so I'm pretty happy. It's not like it's not stellar stuff. It's not like some strong dramatic thing but it's one of those moments where the show sells that you're looking into this other world there's bravos and people yeah. living their lives and you're actually from... recognizing something from the books which is a nice change of pace it is a change of pace <laughs> to recognize. I mean, Cersei had that and you know yeah. her scenes and this had that and everything else is yeah. kind of out there yeah. um, obviously they added a little thing at the end there with, with the, the wave the arguing about it ar- arguing and basically Having Jack and saying, that, well, you know, if she fails or not, it's all the same to the many faced god. So basically, if she were to, I guess, die trying, if, she, yeah. if she's not ready, then well, that's the that's... same to the many faced god. So obviously, showing that he's not particularly concerned about her well being as such. Yeah, which is actually an interesting note for him to kind of throw in there. Um, which probably is true. I don't think that the faceless men are such a. Have a special. Uh, yeah. No, I mean. I mean, the kindly man tries to dissuade her and says, you know, it's it's a hard thing for a woman to do this. uh, And tries, you could live this life instead or that life. It is interesting that they they actually didn't bring that up, that particular angle of it, that uh, it's uh, particularly difficult for women. It's an interest. Obviously, there is a a bit of a, some would say, a, a... patriarchal idea that women give life and <laughs> so they shouldn't they, they find it hard to take it I mean Tolkien has this yeah. with the elves it doesn't mean that all elves no. are I mean there, there, I actually females. read uh, another book which uses the same idea that uh, the particular magic that is being done um, is that Friedman's you're talking about yes Friedman's fantasy uh, trilogy which one is this uh, one um and uh, the Magister trilogy. The Magister trilogy. Yes. C.S. Friedman. Okay. C.S. Friedman. Um, where it's also the idea that the, the form of magic that you can, well, there is simple magic, which you can do, but it actually takes your own life force. The more complicated magic requires you to use somebody else's life force, and that women generally don't pass the test to do that sort of magic because it's, it's, sort of, it. it's sort of anathema to the idea of uh, bringing life into the world. To take someone else's life. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Uh, um, so it reminds me of like, you know, Earthsea where they talk about you know, no. weak is women's magic and there's, there's, yeah. all, there's obviously a lot of um, 
It's almost be a paper between the gendering of magic and yes, no, uh, the wheel of time as well has the variations between female and male true, magic. True, there he's going on the whole strength in one. As yeah, well, all right. Uh, now, now we're going on a tangent here, but yeah, uh, but I think that maybe they shied away from it because of all that sexes, which is a silly reason to shy Jack away. Jack certainly could have perfectly every right in the world to be sexist. He is not in a modern era, so no, exactly. So it would have been a nice touch to actually leave that in now that you brought it up. Uh, you know, we're, there's, there's not a lot to say. I mean, the scenes we're happy with, they're like pretty, they're solid. There's not a lot. There's not... I think they're it, not that much meat to them, so there's meat. not that much to discuss. Yeah. They're, they're, they're fairly small little scenes that move certain characters along because oh, obviously yeah, so much is spent on hard home. One of right and going back to the Thin Man, I, I stopped on, on sort of HBO Nordic stream, I stopped oh. the stream to look at that map, right? The map the guy presented of, of his route, the route he was going to take. So he goes from Bravos to Volantis, and then he's heading towards Marine, it looks like, and, and some of the cities uh, along the river, by way of the Smoking Sea. No wonder the guy didn't want to intrude. No, well, actually, I, he should have. He should have been jumping if, if, no, at the well, if, if, well, jumping at it, if he, he, no, should have, if he was planning to cheat him, he should have said, oh yeah, fine, yeah. and I won't, I won't pay well, your He widow. doesn't cheat everyone, because this, I mean, that guy should not be coming back. I, what are they thinking? <laughs> Just having people Apparently, casually... Yeah, the regular route now goes through Valyria. What the hell? I, I'm i going to guess that this is the, the art department didn't really... They just said, make us a map of someone going to here, to there, to there. <laughs> yeah, and they we'll figure, oh, we'll here... this smoking sea here. That sounds like a great place. So I just found that... I, that's, that's a complete nerd thing, but it's just, it's just so weird. Oh, and you did say also that you liked the way the scene was shot in terms of oh, focusing on the little the movement. Over, yes, yeah. no, you're, thank you for reminding me about it. Yeah. I, I want to make a note of the director here. I, I thought some of the stuff he did was a little too static. I thought like the um, the opening shot of the pyramid scene was really static of, of them sort of... I, I didn't much care for that. But this one was kind of funny where he has these sort of very micro, like half-second cuts to uh, Arya turns and... You know, cuts open an oyster. You know, she she puts vinegar on the the oysters, mm. uh, or he puts down some coins, and yeah. and you just you focus on the hands all of a sudden and, yeah. and what they're doing, oh, and, she, I, and it's set, setting set, up yeah. setting up. I think what how she will. Uh, of course, the question I have is: Is she actually even going to get around to do it, or is she going to get distracted and end up ah. using that poison on someone else? Um, ah, that's true. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Uh, so I, but I just like that little detail where. The hand suddenly mm. he, he's focusing on it because I well, think it makes you think something is going to happen in this particular scene as well. I a wouldn't say bit, so. Uh, I, I didn't uh, take it, but yeah. I mean, I'm just, maybe people who don't have the book in mind yeah. may think that okay, immediately she's going to go and do this. Like, yeah. but what is she going to do? She doesn't have anything. But uh, but to me, it's more the director is setting it up and it's preparing mm. you for when she does something. Yeah. Like you'll you'll be watching those hands and suddenly you'll you'll spot something that's a little bit different and it'll. Who you in and, and, and who you in? I should say. Um, so th- uh, that that was pretty cool. Let's move on to Wendy. Over at Winterfell, uh, Sansa and Fian, uh, or Reek, I should say. Now this is um, again nothing from the books here, but uh, here now Sansa is the second start to learn that. Right. Some at least some of the kids are her life. Yeah. Because John knows from Samwell, and now Sansa knows that um oh, there it is. Okay. That that Bran and Rickon were alive at least at, at some point when everyone thought they were dead. I don't know where we're going with this. I could I think that I'm not sure they're going anywhere. It's just that oh we can't keep these poor siblings not knowing that they're siblings. I, no, 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 no. Yeah. I, no, 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 no. I, I disagree. I think, you know, we know that from the books, getting a hold of Rickon is going to be a story in the, yeah, the winter. Yeah, I guess she's going to know... tell Stannis. Ah. Probably, well, if he's around. To you know, there's, there's various possibilities. If, consider the end of A Death of Dragons, where the pink letter arrives, mm. and it's saying, I want my reek. And my wife back. Uh, he seems to assume they've run to John. Mm. What if Sansa, who has just learned about John, by mm. the way, decides let's run for the wall? John mm. will protect us. Mm. So it's. I think it's bringing them together and learning, um, or the, that's the idea, anyways. For characters, but you know, the best laid plans of mice and men yeah. off go awry. Oh, she's gonna it send off really Brienne, out. maybe. 
Brienne instead of Davos, that's actually not a bad idea. You know, you you, yeah. you, you tried questing for her daughters, so we'll don't try now find a son. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. so I think that 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 could be. Uh, She's gonna have a hard time finding Rickon though. From the video we saw, Arch, Arch yeah. is Arch growing up? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be really hard to recognize him. Well, growing up and hanging out with uh, the Rock and <laughs> so. Uh, uh, do you think they're gonna recast him? Actually, if Rickon shows up again? No, 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 no. no. I, this is why I think they've been emphasizing that all of a sudden it's years, years have passed, years have passed, years yeah, have passed. Everything is going up, Gilly. They've decided. Really. They've decided. I think they've now decided like we can't even continue this whole notion that there's just. You know, a few weeks or months between seasons, we just gonna pretend that years have passed somehow, yeah. and true, and yeah. not worry about it. Um, Poor stuff. Roos and Ramsey, the plans. Uh, the main thing here is Ramsey decides he's gonna do some sort of small raid. We're gonna assume that he gets those twenty men, and small yeah. raid on Sonnis's forces. And what can he do with twenty men? I mean, you can sabotage, you can burn a supply train if you sneak in. You could try and assassinate Sonnis. Um Line up. Line up. Yeah, Brian wants to do that too. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, yeah. True, true. So I, I, I we've seen if, if you guys don't mind spoilers. I'm guessing you don't. Uh, we've seen from sort of uh, promotional material around this that you know they've interviewed Ewan Rian and uh, Stephen Lane at a point in time where they were both clearly filming stuff related to Stannis's camp, mm. and they both had sort of. You know, makeup showing saying mud and blood and scratches and so on on them. So, some sort of something happens. Um, Not quite sure. Uh, That's probably the area of the story. Is this was basically it's going to open up for Sansa to escape while Ramsay's away? Ramsay's away. Maybe. Maybe. Is she gonna? No, she's not gonna try talking to Roos. No, but I'm my. If I were to speculate, I suspect Roos is gonna die. Yeah. In the in her escape attempts. Ah, yeah. That may be the most ambiguous thing ever. Unless she meant the, I don't think so. Like the way it happens somehow. Mm. I don't know. No, that's 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 a good point. Though. But we can killing Roos, and if you still have Ramsay around, then you you're gonna have him being the main yeah. issue and for, for her and for yeah because I mean I, I do think that if we look at the very 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 different situation that we have at Winterfell in the books I do suspect that actually at the time that the pink letter is sent I think Roos is dead it's possible I There's think Ramsay has uh, it's possible done away with him yeah it's possible I, I wouldn't uh, we'll see I mean I, I do believe I'm one of those who believe that the letter is actually from Roos I don't believe Mance Raider wrote it from I don't Ramsey, believe Stannis wrote it uh, from Ramsay sorry but Ramsay is the one who actually wrote it not that yeah. Mance or Stannis wrote it. No. did it so um, oh and uh, you know all of a sudden you know the other weird thing was all of a sudden they're talking about how Stannis has so many more men and so on and suddenly it's I mean they said you know just 6,000 men and half of but, but half of a horse, okay. So, well, he doesn't sound like he has that massive of an advantage over. I mean, I think he even said, I mean, he's got 6,000 men. I thought they were implying that he has the largest army in Westeros at the moment. Uh, I, I, I couldn't quite make sense of that at all. I mean, the Tyrells, I'm pretty sure, have more than that, and the Lannisters probably still have more than that. Uh, even when the show may have. The yeah. show's reduced the numbers a lot. Yeah. Uh, not to mention that you haven't even talked about gathering an army in Dorne, which has not spent any of its resources. Then yeah. again, if they all fight like the same thing, you don't have to worry about it. No. <laughs> all right, let's see. Now we're on the wall. Sam and Gilly. Gilly telling him, you know, it's fine, the scene. I mean, you know, don't, don't get in the way. And Sam says he's going to... Always try to protect her. Um, and Ollie enters. And as I said, I mean, Ollie's conversation is... What he says is almost an exact duplicate of what he told John. So it it doesn't really have any weight to it. The only thing is, ooh, the narrative of... Oh, so something you have to make a hard choice that no one else sees is right. But you know it's the right thing. I would really believe that. Okay. Yeah. 
I don't know. This is not. They're not covering themselves in glory with with no. Ollie. I'm sorry. I I know that it sounded like a great idea for the previous season to have someone to personalize, to show the actual effects of having your village wiped out by wildlings. But then they decided to expand it to make him. Hey, let's make him the. Yeah. I mean, it has nothing to do with this, in the it, books. Well, I mean. I mean the, <laughs> The the conflict yes there is conflict over bringing the wildlings in, but the the main sticking point that gets the watch upset with John is not the wildlings primarily, or the well, straw that breaks the camel's back is not. We the don't wildlings. quite know absolutely, but it does seem to be a big part. Yes, but that 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 decision he makes yeah. at the end suddenly gets them like we can't do it. Anymore. And that and that the decision that he makes is questionable. It is not. Because the idea of bringing the wildlings through to not have them turned into whites, I think we've said this before, that that is in line with the Watcher's duties. Not having, you know, their ultimate oath is about protecting the realms of men against the others, not to protect them against wildlings primarily. So to make, make sure that there are no more other, or not additional others and whites, is very much in line with what the watch should be doing. Yeah. But then John makes a decision that is questionable. The watch ends up being directly threatened. Yeah. But it's a political element and he decides to answer the threat even though the watch shouldn't take part in political and he just divides it with well this is a threat direct to... direct it is a threat at the watch. It's so we have to answer it's basically debatable. It has to do with the institution of the watch itself. It doesn't just have to do with one person's personal. personal grief. Yeah. So it it becomes much more interesting because you can argue is John right or is John wrong? Or you know, are the people reacting exactly. to it right or wrong? It's an interesting dilemma. Yeah. You know, everyone said, well, of course, Ollie is right to be upset that Wildlings killed his family, but should we really be listening to? One person, one when boys, we're, one sort of... you know, when we're talking about the fate of the realm. Yeah, so yeah, um, let's move on. I I was thinking we'd skip Hardo, but I had a couple more points actually we didn't discuss. Uh, Hardo. So the points are um, Lord of Bones, Rattle Shirt dies. I, I'm assuming he's dead <laughs> after being beaten to death by Torment. Uh, that's, uh, I didn't expect it as such. I thought yeah. he would just die fighting. And, and a strangely um, bloodless uh, death for... We see it after, yeah, but they usually they sh- they're happy to show people's heads getting crushed in and yeah. you know blood splattering and this time they didn't do it. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they can, they're not necessarily consistent. Um, and the other... <laughs> when shit starts going down, I like how you wrote that. Um... <laughs> The walkers and then the the knight's king, quote unquote, comes out there to stare at John and kind of um, that yes. was and, and and I thought it, they made it look like more that snow mm. drift came in as as he walked out mm. onto the quay to look at him yeah. and certainly that was a, a sort of nice touch I guess when he sort of showed Ra- up raising all the, 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 the dead, dead and the newly dead it, I thought that was quite good yeah um, ominous. Creepy. Not what people. I mean, that that a, an alleged leaker claimed that you know John gets killed and then uh, his body gets taken to a night king and his eyes open and they're blue. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, that did that not was happen. Somebody very fanciful, apparently. One of the other things that I um, it's quite clear, but this is quite a disaster. Uh, John's effort mostly failed. He had he has about five thousand were with them. It looked like if you could look at how the tribal elders divided, more than that number weren't going to come with them. And yet, with maybe 20 boats, with five, six people at a time, they probably saved a couple hundred, uh, you know, from what we could see. Uh, Everyone yeah, else yeah. is dead and are reanimated. Yeah. So, and this you, does line up pretty well with... Because, I mean, I think we said we wanted to mention a little bit about what the situation is yeah. in the books. I mean, and there we have a letter... From Cotter Pike. Pike comes to the wall and says, you know, it's, you know, it's a disaster here. You know, there's dead things. Uh, dead things in, in the in woods. Wa- dead things in the dead water. Dead things in the water. water. Like, I, 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 I thought they missed the beat there. It would have been nice yeah. saying, you know, whites kind of. Yeah. It's this movie. really, the, the, the letter reads think, like it's out of a horror movie. It's one of those moments where George really hits home that he can, you know, 
he can write horror uh, yeah. very very well because it's something like straight out of what you'd expect to read in a horror novel somebody's writing from this place that has you know be completely overrun by uh, zombies or what have you and, and it's uh, so it's clearly supposed to be a disaster in mm. the novels as well yeah. and it's definitely not going particularly well um, for John either he manages to get a few out and I guess that giant supposed to swim out or something I, he was walking i don't think he can swim to be honest with you but uh, maybe yeah. the idea is is that it's shallow enough that he'll be able to walk all the way to a ship i don't yeah, know i, I mean i'm hoping it doesn't mean that they're keeping a giant yeah um that'd be kind of cool to have a giant kind of hanging around and obviously uh you know that's dragons so you have a giant mm-hmm. residing at castle black for a while so um but it was fun how kind of completely useless they were against him uh, yeah I'm surprised. The one thing I'm surprised they haven't decided to do is show a giant white. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll get that soon enough. But um, yeah, I I think uh, so it worked well enough. It's it worked know, well enough. I mean, it was it a good. Was, it was a yeah. great. And I mean, I know a lot of effort, a lot of time went into it. Uh, yeah, the last thing again, uh, Kit Harrington I think works really well as a sort of action hero. He, uh, he does. He, he does really, really good at yeah. selling that he's fighting and that he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, all that work on Pompeii. All that work on Pompeii actually, yeah. really, actually really, seemed to have done a lot to yeah. to help him. Uh, the movie was, uh, you know, <laughs> but the, the 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 training he got seems to have paid off in in sort of uh, his knowledge of things. So. Um, uh, that 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 it works with him. I think they have him do somebody that. who can fight and make it look like, or make it look like he can fight. Yeah, just now if they can only do it on the other side of Westeros. Uh. <laughs> anyway, other, other end, that, other end of Westeros, fine. But with, with that note, uh, we'll finish episode nine. Probably a very big episode, as you know, as well. Yeah, is it the dance with or of dragons? Dance it's of a... dance of dragons, I believe. Yes. Um, um... So that that's interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, not too much to say though. We just kind of have to wait to see how it's gonna be. Yeah, I'm getting, yeah, increasingly. <sighs> Until next week, then. Until next week. <laughs>